Hi guys, welcome to my new video. So, this portrait is of this girl <laughs> using the picture I took from Sketchy App, as usual. And here you can see me starting with the background. I wanted to create a colorful portrait and wanted to the colors from the background to be on the portrait on the face so that's why I created this colorful background and then on a new layer I'm starting with a sketch with hemp and so I'll be using two brushes in this video hemp and stickman um, here I'm keeping the colors of the background on her face um, but right now I'm doing the hair with a grayish purple color and I'm not sticking to a pre um, pre-saved palette I'm just uh, kind of on the fly picking colors or like from just from the color wheel um, at this stage you can see me adding some darker colors on her features around her eyes is a darker green color because the background is green behind her eyes and then pink color on her mouth which I'm gonna change because I don't think this color suits this portrait and then a deeper bluish color for the eyes um, and the chin I kept the blue color from the background on the chin and here I took a darker pink grayish color I think all of the colors that I'm using in this portrait are grayish very um, unsaturated uh, like they're all in the middle I think uh, saturation wise <laughs> here I'm flipping the canvas just to see if I'll notice mistakes um, but it's not very convenient to flip the canvas when I have the reference on the screen because I, I don't think I can flip the reference to um, yeah, if I'm painting from my phone, like if I'm uh, using the reference on my phone, then I can flip the canvas and the picture on my phone. But when I use a reference like this in Procreate, I don't think I can flip it. So when I flip the canvas, Although I can see some mistakes, I can't compare it to the reference. I think... I'm not sure there might be a way to do that. But anyway, here... You can see I changed the color of her lips. I made a purple color as opposed to a pinkish one. I think this looks better. Because the that area... Uh, on her chin and or on her cheeks are blue and pink so like a mix of that a purple I think looks good and then I'm picking the colors that are on her face like the green area separately 
and then the pink area separately and then I darken that color, that picked color to add dimension so whenever, wherever there's green on her face and I want to deepen that then I'll pick that green color and deepen that green color darken it and on the pink areas as well I'll pick the pink color color pick it and then darken it and apply the shadows there here I'm using the smudge tool to adjust the shapes I really like the smudge tool recently lately because I feel like I can paint with it change the shapes it's a little bit like liquefying it a little bit like pushing the shape making it smaller or bigger whatever here I'm using it a lot because I don't like the shape of her eyes in my version like it it, yeah, <laughs> so I'm changing it to make it look like the reference more. And here I'm adding highlights. I think these highlights are the same color. The brightest uh, highlights on her nose, on her eyes, on her lips, but on her cheekbones I'll use a different highlight color. Here you can see that I picked that blue color on her chin and then darkened it to add dimension. Darkened the color and applied that dark color for the contour of the chin. And here I think I stopped the recording just because I didn't want the iPad to crash like my last two times I think it works this way and then I exported the video the 30 minute recording and the next day this is the next day I'm starting a new recording adding kind of like finishing touches I, with a lighter hair color I lightened some parts to add some dimension to the hair but I'm not gonna add highlights to the hair or darker shadows I don't really spend a lot of time on hair usually it's the face that gets all of my attention and um, so the hair is just two colors and um, the t-shirt is three colors base blue color and then some highlights and some shade here I'm adding the darkest of the hair color of the two hair colors um, and now I'm adding I, I just added the ear and I'm again I'm adding dimension to the contours and here I'm adding a purplish color to make the transition between the lower part of her face, the blue part of her face, with her pink cheeks. I'm just adding some more details, the darker parts, the contours of her eyes, the little folds around her eyes yeah <laughs> this is the cheek highlight that I added it's a little peachier than the pink of her cheek and there's peach in the background as well so the background colors and her face colors are pretty much the same except for that like cerulean blue 
in the background that doesn't exist on her face. Except here, a grayish cerulean blue on her neck. But it's, it's grayer than the one in the background. Yeah. I think I'm gonna lighten the whites of her eye. And then... The, um, the likeness is not amazing in, in this portrait, just because I was recording, <laughs> I was rushing, I know I always use this excuse, but yeah, here I'm using the smudge tool to change her eyelids a little bit. Because in the reference, her eyelids are a little, just a little closed, more closed than in my version. And then I'm flipping and noticing that the, the left eye is a little too high, so I'm gonna liquefy that. I think, maybe not. <laughs> oh. No, I didn't change anything. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. This is the time lapse, and I'm gonna add a another time lapse after this without the reference, right here. And uh, again, thanks for watching, and take care.